Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing another one that was suggested on the community post I uploaded a couple of days ago. So today we're looking at keeping your squad realistic when you're dominating a league. I'm sure this is a situation almost everyone's been in. Whether you start off in the Premier League, eventually after three or four seasons you'll probably have the best squad in the league because the AI is either a bit silly with how it sells its players, you know, De Bruyne just going away to Bayern Munich, they'll replace him with someone like Jamie Vardy who's 36 and 81 rated you know how it is eventually you'll dominate your league it gets a bit boring winning every match as silly as that sounds because in real life that's kind of the dream on fifa not so much you want a bit of a challenge you want an adversary to be there you want an end boss at the end of the season that you're neck and neck with making it a bit more exciting so in this video i've got some suggestions for things that i do or i've seen people do that helps keep their saves a bit more realistic in this regard we're going to be going through things like how to buy players realistically sell them so you're not going to dominate the league by just hoarding all the best players um, other little tips that i've seen here and there so let's get started straight away the most obvious thing to do when you're dominating if you're bored is just start a new save i know it sounds silly and i'm not going to spend too much time on this one but really if you are getting bored of dominating your league maybe next time implement some squad rules or try a challenge save maybe have some storylines going on that give you a bit of randomness and you can't just predictably steamroll the league i think the best way to avoid getting bored from dominance is prevent it from happening in the first place so i really would suggest that if you do start a save and you're scared that you're going to dominate the league maybe start from somewhere like Denmark, Poland, Norway, you think you're going to dominate the league after maybe two seasons. Just give yourself a challenge, maybe sign just certain players from certain nationalities or limit the transfer fees or overall ratings of players that you're allowed to sign. Just makes things a lot better. So let's get into some better tips now, more, uh, more applicable to the actual target of this video. One thing you can do to make your league a little bit more difficult is of course injecting cash into other clubs. If you're on PC, you can just do this via a mod, you know, give every single team in your league a bit more cash. If you're on console, then you can easily do this as well. You can buy some of their worst players for large sums, although there is the small risk of you getting fired, so make sure you save before you do it. You could trade some high rated talent to them for some of their worst talent. If you've got a bunch of players with 94 potential, maybe after one or two seasons in, start just trading that around around for people with more realistic talent for that league. If you're in Poland, for example, I know the average there is about 68 rated. If you've got 10 players with 94 potential, maybe just give every single team one of those players and just trade for some of their players that have similar like 70, 80 potential. Eventually, they'll either sell them for big money to other AI teams or they'll develop them and they'll have really good players and just bring the standard of the league up and make it a bit more fun for you. Another tip that this pairs well with is consider taking over the national team. For example, if you are doing this in Sweden or Norway, a team with their national team on the game, let's say you're playing as Malmo, you've got an entire Swedish team and you're winning the league every single year. You could take over the national team and see if you can win the World Cup with your players. If you've given every other team in the league just as many good players as you, then not only will you be able to develop more good players for the national team, but you'll have a more fun pool of players. You won't get bored of just choosing the same 11 because you'll have someone from Gertberg, you'll have someone from AIK, you know, you'll have your players from Malmo, but you'll just have these random players from all around Sweden that all come in together to play for the national team. And I think that would actually be pretty fun. Another thing that you can do similar to this, instead of moving players, is move yourself. Build up your team to be this unstoppable monster in like the Swedish, Norwegian, Polish league. They're just examples because they're all ones I've played in recently. Go and take over another team. For example, you're managing Krakow, you're top of the league, winning unbeaten. You decide, okay, at the end of the season, I'm just going to get fired. So what you can do is, if you want to go to a worse team than the one you're at already, you need to get fired. So you can do this by either offering a contract with a bizarrely high wage and a really low release clause, or you can try and decide loads of players for insanely overpriced fees you'll get fired eventually usually after about a week and then you can take over a worse team usually the ones you get offered are in the same nation as yourself so if you're a five-star team in poland you'll get offered all the two-star ones maybe someone like termalika from here of course your goal is to try and build up this team to beat your original team the ai like i said will probably be a bit silly with how it sells its players some of your better players will go for ridiculously low fees and not be replaced but overall the team will be still really strong 
strong in the league. And it'll be a fun one as well, you know, going back to your team, seeing your players, maybe bring one or two of them with you. And you've got this little rival in your league. I think that would be super fun and really do suggest it. Even better if you did something like build up Rangers, made them five stars, and then you did something unthinkable like going to Celtic, you know, build them up to five stars. All of a sudden Celtic and Rangers are like Barcelona and Real Madrid, and you've managed both. You're the biggest traitor in Scottish football, but you're also one of the biggest legends. I think that kind of save would be really, really fun. The most obvious way to stop domination is having a worse squad, so that means buying and selling players in different ways. If you're playing as one of these lower leagues, or even if you're in the Premier League or Bundesliga, you know, La Liga, just sell players for when it would be realistic that they would be sold. For example, if you're someone like Barcelona, you've had Pedri or Gavi for a couple of seasons and they're in the 90s. Arsenal out of nowhere comes in with an offer of £350 million. Even if you don't need the money, there is almost no way that the board would not sell the player for that much. Even if they're a legend for the club, players get sold for huge amounts of money. Look at someone like Cristiano Ronaldo. He was at Manchester United for a couple of seasons. They got an insanely big offer for the time of £80 million from Real Madrid. They sold him. They couldn't replace him, but that's part of the fun of selling the player, is trying to find someone to replace them. When you are signing a player, try not to go overboard. So if you've got a team full of 74 rated players, you get promoted to the Premier League. Of course, you could probably justify that, hey, you would sign one or two players who are around 80, 83 rated. Leeds have done it recently. People like Rafinha and Rodrigo, both much better than the rest of their squad. However, I think it's a bit more tough, a bit more realistic. If you try and keep the overall increases, if your squad is 74, try and keep it to something like 76, 77. Just a minimum increase, as low as you can, because I think that does help you out. It does make the save a bit tougher. It gives you a different selection of players. You won't just go for the ones you know are good on Ultimate Team, for example. And it does help keep your save a bit more fun. Transfer restriction policy, stuff like this, really does work well with challenges. So for example, if you're doing something like the Pentagon Challenge, maybe you start out in New Zealand and you've moved to Asia or South America, maybe try and sign a couple of players from New Zealand. They're not gonna have the best overall. And then again, when you move from Asia or South America to Europe, try and sign some players from China or Argentina, depending on where you were, because the players, again, they're not gonna be that great compared to the league standard. Basically, just always keep an eye on your transfers. Make sure you're not being unrealistic, and this will help prevent you from dominating a league because it very rarely happens. For example, Bayern Munich have been dominating the Bundesliga for about 10 years now. It's not because they don't sign the best players. They absolutely do sign the best players for their situation. Low fees usually and good talent. What they're doing is they're weakening the other teams in the league. It's making it a bit more boring. If you were playing a, a save as Bayern Munich, if you're not a Bayern Munich fan, you probably would have quit by now because they've just got the best team in the league by far. They go into every match expecting to win and that is just not fun on a computer game. Hopefully you've got some idea on how to keep your domination save a bit more realistic going forwards. I might not have many tips on how to actually keep it realistic once you are dominating because that's not really a thing that a lot of people play on from. All I can do is help you prevent it from happening in the first place. If you've got any tips, leave them in the comments below because the more tips, the better for a video like this. So do check out the comments and read through them all because usually you guys do have some better ideas than me. I'll pin any amazing ideas that I see. So definitely make sure you check out the comments below. Like the video if you're going to use any of these going forwards and subscribe if you want to see more FIFA tips, challenges, guides, anything like that going forwards. And I hopefully see you in the next video very soon. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.